Hello again folks, as you've just seen from the little bit of film we do have a problem with jackdaws, there are rather a lot of them around here and they steal the food before the small birds can get hold of it. This is one of my homemade bird feeder stations, uh, it's just a, a traditional feeder which fits on the top of a pole, unfortunately as soon as we put the fat balls in the jackdaws take them off. Uh, they can get through the bars with their long beaks and, and take the food away and the small birds don't get a look in and we're forever filling them up. So I thought I'd try and design something that will stop the jackdaws but allow the smaller birds to take the food. So what I'm gonna do now, we're going to the workshop and I'll show you what I have in mind. This is a, a purpose-made fat bore feeder that you buy anywhere. And what I'm thinking of doing is, I've got these two discs, I've cut these out as a trial, but I will share one in a moment how I did it. Uh, I've got one with a hole in the top and one for the base and the principle is that I'm going to fix that piece onto the base piece like that and then this piece will be fitted around the top and I shall make a little shutter to go on there so that you can slide it across to put the fat balls in and then close it afterwards otherwise there's some of them getting in there like squirrels and taking them out. Now um, then I shall get some wire netting and put around the outside. I've got some chicken wire here and I think that'll do fine. Now the first thing you'll notice is that the holes in the chicken wire are much too small for any bird to get through. So I'm going to address that problem and I'll show you what I'm going to do with that in a moment. But first of all, the first thing to do is to cut the discs out. I've been over the shed and I found this piece of old wood. It's only some, some, some cheap plywood. It's actually an old shop fitting. And uh, I'm going to use this because I think this will be ideal for the base. Now to mark the circle out, I'm going to use my homemade compass. I have got smaller compasses but this is a homemade one. I've got a pencil just sellotaped on the one end and a nail on the other and it does the job perfectly. I've had this for years. I made this years ago and I used it quite a lot and you just simply put it on the market where you want it and just draw around like that. Roughly the right diameter. So having done that I'll now proceed to cut that out. Uh, I shall use the fret saw for it because the blade in my band saw is too wide, it's about half an inch or so, which is good for general cutting but it's not much good for doing circles. Um, if you haven't got a fret saw or scroll saw, you can do this by hand or you could use a band saw and just chop the corners off and then sand it round, I have done that, but because I've got a scroll saw or fret saw I'm going to use that. Right, I'm going to use my Hegner fret saw to cut the circle of wood out for the bottom of the bird feeder. Well, that's quite a long way around there, actually. Amazingly, I measured it. It's actually 39 inches, a whole meter around there, which is extraordinary. It doesn't look it. It's incredible. Now, if you haven't got a, a scroll saw and you're dubious about cutting a circle, because it's not easy cutting circles. I haven't bothered too much with this. I haven't been too fussy. The blade's a little bit blunt and it wanders a little bit, but for this job it doesn't make a scrap of difference. If you're dubious of doing this and you haven't got a scroll saw and you don't want to cut a circle, you could do it square. It, I've made it circular, but there's no actual reason. You could do it as a square cage if you want, or a hexagonal or whatever shape you wanted. It's up to you. So don't worry, you can still make a bird feeder like this using a square section one rather than the round one. Once you've cut your main disc out for the bottom, you need to cut another disc out uh, you need to bore a hole in the top to accommodate the fat ball cage. It just needs to stick out through the top like that, just sufficient flush with the top so you can put a cover on it. I'm going to bore four holes in the bottom, uh, approximately inch and a quarter, inch and a half diameter. The reason for this is it serves two purposes. One, it allows birds to go up from underneath. They do actually go from underneath as well as through the sides. And it also allows any water that lands on it to drain away rather than lying on there and rotting the wood away quickly. Now to make the holes, you can either use a drill like this. This is an inch and a half 
centre point bit. You can use that in an electric drill and just drill four holes. Or you can do it on the fret saw, it's entirely up to you really, whatever you've got. It's better in a pillar drill actually, but good job I'm filming it. Kind of makes my eyeballs vibrate that does. <laughs> do a bit from one side, then turn it over and do the other side. It's a bit scary actually doing this, but it's such a large drill, there's a lot of power there. So there's one, actually that wasn't too bad. There's one hole, that hole there's inch and a half, that will allow most small birds to go through, like house sparrows and things like that will get through. Um, Chaffinch, if he goes in there, he could get through there. Blue tits, great tits. If you only wanted blue tits in there, you'd need the hole smaller, but that will allow most smaller birds. But obviously, a jackdaw is not going to get through there, is he? I'll just drill the other three holes. Oh, I'm glad that's done. I didn't like that much. If you're not careful, if you don't hold this firmly, it will spin around and it could flow across the workshop and do a bit of damage. So there's the, the base piece with the four holes in. As I say, this is all experimental. I've not made one like this before, so it might go horribly wrong. So um, I'm, I'm just filming it as I'm making it, so we'll see what happens. So the next thing we've got to do is get the wire netting around it, and that isn't easy. I've cut a piece of wire netting off here, as you can see, a bit of chicken wire, actually. And that's got to be wrapped around those two discs, so that one's on the top and one's on the bottom. And that is going to be quite awkward, I think you'll agree, uh, holding those two together. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut some little pillars and I'll put four, three or four, I'm not decided yet. I'm going to nail the piece between the two or screw it, whatever, to make it into a cylinder or a wheel like that. And that'll make it much easier for me to attach the chicken wire to the outside. Well, it's going to be a bit tricky fitting these posts on here, nailing them together and hold it all together easily while it's being assembled. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my trusty glue gun. And I'm going to use the glue gun to assemble it together because that dries almost well in a few seconds. It'll hold it together, but it's important to note I shall actually put some other fixing on as well, like screws or nails, because if you just use the glue gun, trust me, it will come apart. I mean, in, in the context of this, it's not too bad because once it's assembled, the wire netting will hold it together anyway. But if you use just glue gun to hold joints and you put them outside, it won't last. i found they always come apart. Uh, an old mate of mine, poor old Mr Fowles, he used to make bird tables. And they were very nice bird tables too. And he actually had an outlet where he was selling them in a little uh, shop. And he sold all these bird tables. And unfortunately, he put them all together with a hot malt glue gun. And they all came back and he had to replace them all. <laughs> because when they're out in the weather... They just fell apart. It's a shame because they were really nicely made, these bird tables. Very fancy. Poor old Mr Fowles. He was a good bloke, very clever. But, but he used a glue gun. So glue guns are really handy. But as I say, you've got to nail it as well because they won't, uh, they won't last. While that's warming up, that'll take a little while to warm up, I'll show you how I plan to put the holes in the wire net in. What I do is I make these little rings like this. I'll hold it up to the camera so you can see it. All it is, you just use some ordinary garden wire, anything will do, it doesn't have to be new, it can be any old scraps of wire, whatever. A reasonable thickness to make it fairly strong, otherwise the birds will force it apart. And you, you need it about the right, depends on what sort of bird you want in there, it's, it depends on what size hole you make or ring you make. Now uh, that I've made, I think that's about inch and a half, it just happens to be a little bottle I had of patent leather cleaner. Probert's patent leather cleaner. This has been hanging about for donkey's years, but it just happens to be the right size to make these ringlets. And all you do, you just get a piece of wire. I just snip a piece off. It's easier than on the hole like that. Get a pair of pliers and, and bend it round so it sticks out a little bit first like that. And then get your receptacle. It don't have to be a. It doesn't have to be a Probert's patent leather cleaner bottle. It can be anything of the right size. And just wrap the wire around like that until you get I hope you can see this it's a bit fiddly and bend the other piece out so that it's roughly about the right fit twist the two together and get your pliers on it and just twist like so and if you do it properly and neatly you can get a good joint there you go don't do it too tight and break the bottle although it need to be pretty tight to break a bottle a glass bottle I think if you had a plastic one it'll probably just collapse but you just uh, undo it a little bit to get it off the bottle 
take it off your, it just has to be a bottle, it can be a bit of wood or anything you've got that's convenient and the right size. There we go. Right, there's the loop. All you've got to do then is just get some snippers, pliers or whatever and just snip the surface off the end. So you end up with a nice little loop like that, look. And then what you've got to do when you've assembled it, you cut the wire netting and then you wire, using the bits of wire you've cut off, if you're careful, you wire those rings in at appropriate places so the burrs can get in and out of the feeder without harming themselves. Just be careful you don't leave any sharp edges, but I'll, I'll come to that in a moment when I've done the rest of it. Anyway, let's get back to the bit with the glue gun. It should have warmed up by now, so I'm just going to put a spur on the end. You have to be quick with this stuff because it, it, soon, it soon sets, which is a, a, a good thing in a way because, you see, that's practically set now and it means I can get on with the next one. If I used ordinary PVA, uh, it would take hours before that was strong enough to do that. As I say, it's not a strong joint, permanent joint, but it'll, it'll do to put it together anyway until I fixed it. Do the same with the others. I'm just, they're handy things glue gun. They're one of the most useful tools in the workshop, but the one thing they're not very good at is actually woodwork, funny enough. I mean, you can use them for holding things together while you're working on, but they're hopeless for making... Don't try making wooden artefacts for your house using a hot melt glue gun, because they're not that strong long term, but it's good to hold things together while you're fixing or another way. And also, you can use it for sealing things. I've actually done a video on glue guns, I think, showing you what you can use them for, because they are very handy. I wouldn't want to be without them, and it's good for fabrics and stuff. I'll try and get them flush with the outside of the disc, but I'll have to do it very quickly because it, as soon as I get that on there, it'll start to set. So let's go. This will be a bit good for fun, won't it? Blob there, blob there. You've got to do it very, very quickly. Do you want to get one go at it? Oh dear. That one, that one. Oops. I wish I had four hands. That one's already set. Look. I think, I think I've almost got it. You see what I mean? You need you need four hands really, because but you're trying to push one in, the other one falls out. Anyway, that's not too bad. That's quite a nice little house actually, isn't it? As I say, this is all trial and error. I've not done this before, so it might all go horribly wrong and it might not work. But don't matter. It's all recycled stuff. I haven't bought anything. It's only junk. Yeah, oh, that's all right. Isn't it? Right, I've decided what I'm going to do. I'm going to use these ring grip nails to hold the thing together because as I say it's only holds it together well when there were a net is put on. These are, in case you didn't, haven't used them before, these are ring grip nails. They've got like a thread on them. They're brilliant for holding in. Once you get them in it's a job to get them out. But because it's going in end grain it will give it a better better fix. I'm gonna, I've got a very fine drill in there. I'm actually going to drill a hole through the plywood part just to make it easier. There you go. Not, I haven't drilled into the actual wood. I don't need to do that. I've just drilled into the plywood uh, so it's easier for the nail to go through and then it should go in there without splitting. That should hold it together. Actually, I think one nail will do in each one. I was going to put, you could put a couple in each. I suppose if you put two in, it'll hold, stop them swiveling. But I don't think it needs it. I think that's strong enough. I think we'll leave it at that. <laughs> 